Tomorrow's just a normal day. What? What's tomorrow? No, tomorrow's my birthday. Your birthday? Yeah. Happy birthday, birthday. to you. We won't have a... Oh, thank uh, you. Ah. You remember. Ah. Happy birthday <laughs> to <laughs> you. Oh my gosh. Happy birthday to you. Come all the way in so we can Happy see you. Oh we'll gosh, be I... right back. <laughs> ah, good morning, welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Pastor Jason. Uh, I'm not good at these, am I? No, that was phenomenal. Uh, Please keep making that sound over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> we got a scripture for your day. We're gonna pray over your day. Pray over your day, and we're we're back. We are. We're back on your incredible uh, teaching from last weekend. Back to the blessing. I encourage you to get into church this weekend if you live in the Valley area. Mm. Here at Saturday night, Sunday morning, we're in uh, Colossians. And and Wednesday we talked about uh, verse five and six, chapter one. That um, since the day we truly understand God's grace, uh, we begin to grow and bear fruit. It's in that day. Right. Of understanding. And so we it's, can live our whole Christianity uh, in famine and in lack uh, for a few reasons. But yeah. one of them Paul's bringing out is just a lack of understanding of God's grace. Or in other words, you can't receive all of God's goodness because you, you think that you're not worthy. You can have a super cool car. I'm going to use a hypothetical IKEA. Let's say you have just a really luxury car. Like a white one? Oh, it's so nice. 2014. And uh, so you have your Kia. It has all the goodies in it. But if I don't... I have a key, it's useless. Yeah. And what he's saying is, God says, hey, this is all the goodies. There's so many goodies. I want to bless you when you go in, bless you when you go out. I want to bless whatever your hands touch. I want to prosper you, as we talked about on Wednesday. I want to multiply yeah. these things in your life. I have it available, but the key is, is to understand grace. Because when I don't understand grace, and I walk through life feeling like I'm not worthy of the blessing, yeah. then now I don't have the faith to operate and have the blessing. When I feel like... It doesn't work if I feel like I'm no good and nothing good's going to happen to me. Your fear is either going to be uh, uh, bringing in the things that you don't want or your faith brings in the things that you do want. That's right. Faith moves a mountain. Fear brings a mountain and in your way. And so we have to see that God's, gra- that, that God's blessing on your life is a gift. Like it it's for, Because you chose to believe in Jesus and He already earned it, He did the work, boom, it's a gift. And so it says in, in Galatians chapter 3 that... Christ redeemed us, or God redeemed us, in order that the blessing that was given to Abraham, which includes fruitfulness and multiplication and many other things, might come to the Gentiles, which is anyone who would believe in Jesus Christ, by faith. So when I step into a true understanding that, okay, this blessing that God has assigned to me, I've heard so many times that, well, God's not going to bless you if you don't, this, this, and A, B, and C, and D, and all these other things that you have to, hoop. if you're in and your G, sin, I hate G. if you're not, if you're, you know, you live in your life, you make some bad decisions, and you've, you've you know, and everybody sins every day, uh, but, you know, your sinful nature, blah, 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 and then now you, God can't bless you. And so that's that old covenant thinking, though, that you're earning your blessing. No, no, it's so clear in Romans chapter 3 and chapter 4 that the blessing of God is a gift. It comes without wage. So as soon as I start assigning also a wage to my friend Ted or Jim, or well, God's not going to bless Nancy because of you know. The, well, you know, you boom, know Nancy. Well, you do, and God right. can't bless that. I was like, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know who Nancy is. She's I don't like, either. Oh. Nancy just screamed at her screen right now. She's like, no. <laughs> is that uh, you're assigning work to the blood? So yeah. when you receive God's blessing as a gift, now you are fruitful and you're growing because right. that blessing has no choice but to grow on the inside of you. We grew up in a if you sin bad things happen to you. We grew up in that, and I grew up in that. And my life did not take off and multiply until in 91 when I came into an understanding of God's grace. That's yeah. when my life began to skyrocket. Since the day. I had it all available to me all the whole time. It was there. But until I understood that, wait a second, God's promises are yes and amen. Yeah. It doesn't say God's promises are for those that live perfect. Yeah. Because if they are for those who live perfect, guess what? You didn't make it. You didn't, it didn't matter how good you tried it. The Pharisees tried to be so good, yet they still operated in one of the big sins, which was judgment and condemnation. Yeah. So you can't find a way. They're in pride. So here's the thing. You can't be good enough today. 
just be the best you you can and understand that God loves you no matter what you do and that God's promises are headed your way if I understand that I cannot earn his gift. His gift is a gift. If I gave my kids a Christmas gift, say, here you go, and then they sat down and went, well, yesterday I lied, I'm and I didn't worthy. do the dishes this last week, and I didn't, I'm not even worthy to open it. I'd be like, well, you didn't do the dishes, you are right. <laughs> you are but right. I'm not God, but God's like, no, no, that's a gift. Yeah, right? Right? To, but, to what leper did Jesus say, oh, I'm sorry, we've got to straighten out your life first before I can heal you. <laughs> Right? You've oh, got, never, that's a you've good got word. too much sin. And you, yeah. I mean, the reason that you have leprosy, let's be honest, is because of your <laughs> sin and your parents' sin, sin and that's right, right. God's been punishing you. And i got to check with God for a second to see if he's yeah. done punishing you yet. You might have a few more days or you know weeks or funny? months to go on. And... Because we know that when Jesus died, now God sees no sin because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's almost like when I get home and I'm like, how'd the kids do today? And mom's like, oh, they were perfect. No, they weren't. <laughs> I'm like, all right, blessings from daddy. Yeah. Right? It is the washing away of all of our junk. Yeah. God doesn't see your sin because it says it's as far as the east is from the west. I know how far that is. Yeah. I know from a, a really wise movie once that I know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. <laughs> That's from, uh, oh, you have to name that movie. No, don't tell them. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. They got to name that movie you today on the comments. The sun uh, rises in the sun. Okay. So, Colossians chapter Wayne. 1. What? What, what, kind of, what kind no, of too cow- much, too much. What kind of cowboy name is Chon Wing? <laughs> it's terrible. It's a horrible cowboy name. <laughs> Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 10. Go. Oh, Colossians 1, 9 and 10? What? I thought we were... Okay. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and in increasing in the knowledge of God. So what did he say? He, said, he, he shows us here now that we're praying for you, that because you truly understand grace, we're praying for you, that you might be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Yeah. Okay, so understanding grace has to recognize that God's intention for my life is good things. He, like, from the very beginning, he went to Adam and was like, the first thing he said to Adam is, I'm a bless, uh, blessed, you're blessed, yeah. fruitful, increase, uh, uh, subdue, he, he says, subdue. fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over it. So this is what God's plan is for mankind. The first thing out of his mouth is to bless. That's his intention. He said to Abraham, I will bless all peoples through you. So God was thinking in advance, I've got to get the blessing to everybody, Ted and even Nancy. Wow. And I'm going to do it through this window that I found I called Abraham. And the reason Abraham became the window is because he had faith in God. And the Bible says in Romans, but it also says in the book of Genesis chapter 13, that Abraham believed God or amened God. He believed God and God credited it to him as righteousness. righteousness. So he was seen as righteous. Boom. He gets all this stuff happening to him. And now he opens a window for Christ that by faith in Christ, all of us can be blessed. And so he's, he, so Paul's saying this. He's saying we have to know God's will, be filled with the knowledge of God's will through wisdom and understanding that comes by the Spirit. And that wisdom and understanding can't come to us by the Spirit if we're living under the curse of the law of sin and death. We're living under the old covenant and the old way of thinking because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 that when I have uh, when I have the law is being read that there's a veil over my eyes and I can't see. You can't see it. I can't see. I'm not getting the revelation of what the Spirit is trying to show me in His Word. So in other words, that truly understanding God's grace means God's Spirit begins to reveal to you the mysteries and the hidden things of God when you read His Word realizing and then wisdom and understanding come to you and begin to fill you with the knowledge of his will so that we might please him in every work. So the goal of God putting his blessing to you first is still that we might start having obedient lives and live our lives pleasing to God. It's just that knowledge of right and wrong didn't work. We failed. So now he gives us the knowledge of his will because his goal is still good moral behavior. And he gives us understanding. Because if That's I, the key thing. If I punch you, you might punch me back. I love you. I'd take it. I think <laughs> as a Christian, I, maybe 20 years ago I would have taken it. But I'd take reaping it. and sowing on the earth. I would reap it. But you'll get it. You'll get something at some time. <laughs> hey, w- w- Man, I wish we had more time. We need to pray over your day. Dear yes. Father, Lord, we ask that you bless their day, prosper their day. Help them, Lord, to just understand just to get that understanding of your love for them and your grace towards them, that you want them blessed, you want them to multiply in this time, Lord, and that as they begin to understand your grace, your blessings begin to be poured out on their life, and 
naturally just makes you want to live life in a higher level. You want to be better. You want to do better. I don't do better because I'm condemned. I do better because of your love. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Hope you enjoyed today. Give us thumbs up. Click that that share button. Be in church this weekend. Wherever your church might be, find a local church and get planted in that church. It's so important. He's forever trying to get me to think. He says, I made Abraham heir of the world and you're joint heirs with Christ Jesus because you're part of the offspring of Abraham. You're like, heir of the world, that's big. He says, Jesus says, I, you can move mountains by faith if you just believe. You ask anything in my name and it will be done for you. Get rid of your doubt. He says, I'm going to put my spirit in you. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. And then he says, I'm going to give you my mind. Man, Jesus was smart, yo. You think Einstein was smart? Jesus smokes him. And he says, I gave you that mind. So, so he's forever, and he's, Jesus is like, you do, you're going to do greater things than I did. What is he trying to do? He's trying to get you to expand your tent, man. Yeah. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. Because 2018 is going to be a year of him expanding you into things you never thought or dreamed or imagined were even possible.